Hello and welcome to today's video and my first live stream on YouTube. So if you come along, say hi. And if we have a lot of people on YouTube, maybe I'll do more videos on YouTube. So say hello. Today, I want to talk to you about the biggest mistake I made in my healing in 2023. This is a, probably a tough one to share, you know, because when you when you have a YouTube channel, when you when you are a practitioner and you're helping people with their health, say on a on a daily basis, you always want to be. You get this feeling like you always want to be in the best place you, that your physical health could be. You know, you want to be a trailblazer. You want to be like the shining example for everyone. And the funny thing is, you know, there's a saying, the the cobbler's children go barefoot. And that basically means like the guy that makes shoes for a living neglects to give shoes to his kids, you know? And the same thing is kind of true. People that help other people with their health often neglect their own health. And I actually, I would say generally this is not the case for me, but I definitely did neglect something. I regret it. Hindsight is 2020 though. We all make mistakes. The only the only bad mistakes are mistakes that you don't learn from. And I've learned from this mistake. I've implemented new strategies around this mistake. And I'm trying to, my whole life, my whole disease recovery process, my whole journey through chronic illness appears to be, I make the mistakes so you don't have to. And I make the mistakes so I can alchemize them into information and transformation to share with you. So I'm going to try and do that today. I'm going to try and turn my biggest mistake of 2023 into something useful for you. So what was it? What was my biggest mistake? Between October and let's say the end of December, I was not taking any probiotics consistently. I was being very undisciplined with my, with my probiotic regime. So during this time, I actually traveled to Thailand. So I was living in Thailand at this time. And this was a part of the reason as to why I, why I did it. But it's had a really negative consequence in my health. And I would love to, if I could avoid you having to experience that, I would love to do that. So I can come up with excuses if I want. I can say, oh, I was traveling. I, it was hard to source the correct probiotics. I can make a million excuses, but the thing is, this is the thing with healing. It's your responsibility. Like, this is my responsibility. Even if it's difficult, even if it's challenging, even if the odds are stacked against me, even if things aren't going in my favor, it doesn't matter. Like, I can make all the excuses I want, but I'm the one that now has to live with the consequences of my actions. So, I'm the, it's just me. It's just me that it really affects. So, you can make excuses, but ultimately you, you're going to have to live with it. So don't don't make excuses. Do the things you need to do. So I wasn't taking probiotics consistently. I brought a probiotic with me, a probiotic called Seed. I like this probiotic. This is a cool probiotic. It's got 25 strains. It's a symbiotic, which means it also has a prebiotic with it. But this just wasn't really working for me. Being in Thailand, the food was very different. The heat was a lot. You know, could you imagine living in a tropical country? It's a lot. It's a lot of stress for my body. And I was enjoying my life. I was having fun. I just didn't really care. I just didn't really want to have to take probiotics because when when you take probiotics, especially if your microbiome still isn't completely balanced and you're not in perfect health, you, you feel worse when you take them. And this is because the rebalancing process where the probiotic organisms are killing the opportunistic or the pathogenic pathogenic organisms in your gut they die they release toxins they you don't feel good you don't feel nice and i was traveling you know i was i was enjoying my life after having a really severe chronic illness and i was like i don't i just want to live life, you know i don't want to i just want to i just want to do stuff i want to i want to i want to be excited i want to travel i want to explore i want to do things and, and i did that and it was great and it was very healing in many ways but my regret is I did this and I neglected my probiotic, probiotic intake because for me, when I take probiotics, it does affect my mood slightly. I'm slightly less positive and less optimistic, a bit more towards depression, a bit more lethargic. I don't have as much energy, it makes my digestive system hurt a little bit. And I just feel a bit crap. I just feel a bit crappy and nobody really likes that. 
And this is why I know a lot of people avoid taking probiotics because you don't feel good when you do it. The thing is, you need them. You need them. And please learn from my mistake. You need them. The reason they make you feel bad is because you need them. So the people that say, I don't tolerate them. They make me feel bad. Uh, I don't like it. Like You're the people that need it the most. You are the person that needs this more than the person that doesn't really feel anything positive or negative. If you feel bad when you take probiotics, you are the person that needs probiotics the most. And it's going to be the hardest for you to take them because you don't feel good when you do it. And it's exactly why I, I wasn't, wasn't doing it. I will say it would have been easier if I had access to more probiotics. In Thailand, supplementation is not really a part of the it's not really a part of the culture. Like they, they do take care of their health, but they do it in a different way. You know, they're more orientated towards say like acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine and supplements aren't such a big thing. They did have some things, you know, I got a liposomal glutathione supplement. I got a zinc supplement. They had some things. Probiotics didn't really exist over there. I guess it's because they have a lot of different types of fermented food. So they're like, why would, why, why do we need that? <laughs> that, that we, we don't need it. But again, probiotics make, uh, fermented foods can make my stomach hurt a bit as well. So I'm a bit more cautious on those. So I didn't take them. That was my mistake. It got to say, uh, Jan let's say January, about a month ago. And my digestive system has just been off. Um, and I really put it down to the, the lack of probiotics. And I know this is true because I've started taking probiotics again. And I feel terrible when I take them. They make me feel awful. And just as I told you just now, if you feel bad when you take them, you're the person that needs them. It's exactly the same case for me. I have to taste my own medicine. and I, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like my own advice. But it's the advice that's going to transform my health. I know it. I just know it. I have the experience. This is not the first time I've done this. You know, I've already worked through building my probiotic tolerance before. But you know, when you when you when things are going well, you you kind of neglect the things that, that got you there. And now I'm paying the price. So for me, paying the price right now means I've lost a lot of tolerance. I've lost a lot of tolerance to, to certain foods. So for me, the things that give me the most problem are generally raw foods. So you can think like salads, but especially like raw, like nuts and seeds and things like beans and legumes and currently garlic. I, I never had a problem. Like, so before, even before this, I still had to be a little bit more cautious with say nuts and seeds. You know, I could do four Brazil nuts and not have a problem. I could do 10 pistachios and not have a problem. And especially if I would prepare them properly, you know, if I would soak and sprout them, I'd be okay. I can remember eating two tablespoons of chia seeds, no issue. But right now, if I do that, I feel really bad. For me, it really affects the motility in my digestive system. I really find that I feel like the motility in my small intestine doesn't work very well. It can't move the food through. It just kind of backs everything up. And it feels like pressure. It feels like a fullness. And it just doesn't feel right. And I know something is wrong. I don't think this is purely physical. I think there are other layers to this. And I'll I'll talk about I'll talk about these. This could be interesting for you. But I really think the probiotics, missing the pro, missing out on the probiotics had a profoundly negative impact. So I've added those, I've added some back in. I've added in, so what I'm playing with right now is some soil-based organisms. And if you've watched some of my other videos, you might be thinking, what are you talking about? You don't talk about soil-based organisms. Why are, you, why are you doing that? Why would you tell us to do something and then go and do something different yourself? Thing is, I'm a guinea pig. I like to experiment on myself because I like to figure things out so then I can find the best results and then I can share them with you as well. The only way that you you do this, and th like this is again one of these like core principles, these like harsh truths of healing, is it is a trial and error process. You can have a million, you can have hundreds of millions. You can do the best functional testing on the planet. You can work with the best practitioner. It still comes down to trial and error most of the time. That is just the reality of of this of this process. It's trial and error, and you have to try things, and you have to do the wrong things to find the right things. So I am now seeing this as an opportunity to embark on a new chapter where I'm going to learn even more about gut health. You know, I'm still in a place where I have so much tolerance to foods that I could never have imagined. Having been on a restrictive diet of five foods for five years, 
And now I like I can eat gluten and I don't have any problems. I can eat dairy without a single issue. You know, I can do I used to have severe histamine intolerance. I can literally eat as much histamine as I want. I can eat yogurt followed by fermented meat. You know, over here I'm in Portugal right now. They've got chorizo, they've got like pepperoni and things like, like I can eat all of that and I have no issues whatsoever. So like I'm 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 far from like having regressed all the way back to the start, you know. I've just had this little wig, a little wobble. I've lost a little bit of tolerance around the foods that I was already a little bit weaker around. So particularly this is like garlic. Before I couldn't really do raw garlic, but now I'm, I can't do cooked garlic either. Even a little bit of like, like a seasoning is giving me issues. And that's that's new. Like that, that I've not had that. I've not had that before. And like the raw stuff, I'm just I'm just not even touching it. Like maybe I'll have a little bit of a little bit of a uh, lettuce in a sandwich or a bit of tomato or and I can do fine with like fruit juices, vegetable juices, that sort of thing. No it no issues. But this was like a a call to action. This was like a you need to take action now. You are you're observing a negative consequence of of the lapse in the care that you've been providing to yourself. So I'm now playing with spore-based organisms. I will say the one the probiotics I really like are the custom probiotics the D-lactate free and the 11 strain formula. Quite hard to get in Portugal. The, the, the thing is, if, unless you live in, in America, it's actually quite hard to get them because you have to pay like taxes and it just it's just very frustrating like getting anything shipped into Portugal from outside of Portugal. The custom service is absolutely terrible. It is really, really bad. Extremely unreliable. So I got some from, my brother was actually trying some and he said they were working really well for him. And I thought, oh, I'll give him a shot as well. So what I'm currently trying is, is a brand called Youth and Earth. And these are soil-based organisms. And inside they have Bacillus subtilis. So if you read it, it's actually subtilis, but you don't pronounce the B. It's a silent B. So it's Bacillus subtilis, Bacillus clausii, and there was one more, Bacillus coagulans. These are spore-based organisms. And I'm playing with these. When I started taking them initially, I was getting this weird histamine response, which is very strange for me because I have not had a histamine reaction for maybe over a year, probably longer actually, very long time. And for me, a histamine reaction is like a little bit of itchiness, like kind of here, and this feeling of like pressure in my eyes, like especially in this eye, there's a, I, have a, a, I have a large vein. Maybe you can see it actually. I have a large vein in this corner of my eye. And it feels like it's bulging out. And it feels like I have an eyelash in my eye and I actually don't. It's very strange. Everyone has different histamine reactions. And I had this. It was completely manageable, you know, and I'm still like pounding down the chorizo, eating yogurt and everything. It was not actually just the, the histamine intake, but it was a histamine kind of reaction, which makes me think that this is interfacing with my immune system in some way. And I've been working up. And as I encourage people that watch my videos and my clients, like I'm following the Goldilocks zone principle. Like I don't just make videos for the sake of like, this is like some fun idea that I made up. Like this is a fun theory. Like this is actually how healing works. And I follow this principle myself. So I started on half a capsule every two days. And this is the equivalent dose of basically 2 billion CFUs. It's tiny. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny dose. You know, I have some clients that I'm working with and they're taking 1.2 trillion CFUs a day. You know, 1.2 trillion. It's insanely higher. And I'm on this like little tiny baby dose. It's like tiny, tiny dose. Because that's what I can tolerate. That's that's my zone of tolerance. And then I've worked myself up to, I'm I'm now, I'm, I'm, I'm increasing this over time. I'm now working between the 4 billion and the 6 billion. And, you're, and you, you might be thinking like, that is, that's pathetic. That's a tiny dose. I'm so proud of it. It took me over a month to build myself back up to this dose. And that just goes to show me just how important this is that I need to do it. The fact that it is causing me so many problems means it's exactly the thing that I need to do. But it makes me feel uncomfortable. It messes up my digestion. It, it like messes with my head and with my emotions. It, it, it saps my energy. And obviously, I don't want to do things that make me not feel good. I have a wife. I have a career. I have a life to live. You know, I don't have, I don't even identify with having a chronic health, health problem anymore, a chronic disease, because I can basically live a, a fairly normal life. So I have like life to live. So I don't want to do things that make me less capable of, of living that life. But I have to see that 
taking the probiotic, even if it sacrifices slightly from, from my day to day, is actually an investment in tomorrow. Correcting my microbiome imbalance, correcting my gut dysbiosis, I know is literally, like I know when I fully correct my gut, when my gut flora is perfectly balanced and is working 100% for me, I know the last 12 or 15 or 18% of my chronic illness will just fade into dust. And I will be like radiant with energy and really creative and just full of positive emotions. I, I just know it. I've experienced it in the past to know to know how it works. The thing is, the process isn't sexy. The process is actually really shit. It's really not a fun thing to do. To voluntarily take a supplement in the morning knowing you're actually making your quality of life worse for the rest of the day. For me, at least, it's actually about four hours. So four hours after I take my probiotics in the morning, I'm a bit miserable. I'm a bit stroppy. I feel a bit like a bit like, uh, like I don't like it. I don't feel nice. And it, it's like voluntarily choosing to do that. You don't really want to, but I'm at the point now where I've been faced with that negative consequence. I've seen my food tolerance decrease. I've seen my ability to eat nuts and seeds disappear. I've seen my ability to tolerate garlic cooked and raw reduce or completely go down. I wouldn't say it's zero. I can probably have a little bit, but it's not where I want it to be. So now it's like, okay, I have to take action. It's like reality. Give me a nice slap and said, get back on track. You need to do this. So I, so I am. AJ, I think AJ is Andrew. Let me know if that's you, Andrew. If not, let me know what your name is. AJ says, it's been five months and I'm still on a baby spoon. So that's exactly what I'm saying. You know, it's, this is a, 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 I'll be honest, it's quite a miserable, tedious process, but that is what it is. You know, you don't get to, you don't get to design or choose the process. You just have to follow the steps that are going to get you the outcome that you want. So for context, one baby spoon is approximately 25 billion CFUs. So even that dose, you're, you're looking at doing a dose right now that's about five or six times higher than what I'm able to tolerate, you know, just to give you some context. So although I will say I have found that, so obviously I'm still in my research and development well, that's like maybe the scientific, like, oh, I'm doing my research and development. I see it more like I'm doing my guinea my guinea pig phase, you know? I'm just like testing it on myself first. And when I know a little bit more about the differences, uh, you know I'll be making more content about this. But my experiences so far have been that these SBOs at a lower dose seem to be more powerful than the same dose of lactobacillus and bifidobacterium, as in... They have more of a provocative effect. They have more of a, of a, let's say, like stimulating or facilitating a Herxheimer reaction. They, they seem to be a little bit more aggressive. They seem to be a little bit more uh, disruptive to the microbiome. And I think that can be a good thing and that can be a bad thing. I also, I'm not sure about how to use these around things like histamine intolerance in, say, like in my in my clients yet. I don't have the experience with this. So these are things that I feel like I really need to feel confident about what I'm talking about before I really create videos about things. So that's why you're not seeing this content out there yet, because I, I only really like to post videos about things that I am certain of. You know, when I'm making a video, although it isn't medical advice, I know that this is influencing the decisions that you make in your healing process. You know, you're going to spend money on different things. You're going to pursue different courses of action. You're going to, you're going to do something with, with what I have said. And that's a heavy responsibility. So I want to make sure that I actually know what the hell I'm talking about before I say it. So I can't, I don't, I don't have the data. I haven't guinea pigged myself enough on these new probiotics yet to give you, to give you a full consensus. But I think there's something there. I think there's something very interesting. They seem to be working really well for my brother, and he's very intolerant to probiotics. So I'm going to keep playing with it. And really today, I just wanted to share with you my my mistake so that you don't make it too. If you don't tolerate probiotics, you are exactly the person that needs them. You need them. You need them. You need them. You need to figure out a way to start, even if it's miserable, even if it sucks in the short term like figure it out because I, I absolutely promise you it is the biggest for mo I would say for the majority of people, it is the biggest needle mover in the, in the healing process. I would say that the two biggest influences on healing are 
your gut and your microbiome, as in like taking probiotics and shifting your microflora and healing the emotional root cause. They are the two biggest things. Emotional root cause is very complex. It's it's a very individualized thing. It's always quite messy. Emotions are like, ew, like I don't want to have to deal with that. Like that's <laughs> probiotics is simple. It's like take the damn powder, eat the eat the capsule, like do the thing. It's very streamlined. It's very easy. So like do it. You know, you really you really, really need to do it. They're 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 so important. If you're taking like big doses of probiotics and you don't really feel worse for it, first of all, I'm extremely envious of you. I'm extremely, extremely envious. I'm very jealous of your of your position because having your microbiome working for you is oh, you're you're so fortunate that you're you're in that position. I'm not saying you're lucky because you probably worked really hard to to get there, but you're fortunate. You know, you're in you're in a good spot. You still need to take them, okay? Even if you tolerate the milk, you still need to take them. We live in a world now where everything you eat has antibiotics in it. Everything you eat has pesticides on it. Everything you eat is contaminated in some way, and this is hard on your microbiome. So it's just as important, even if you tolerate them well, you need to keep them. You need to keep those levels high. Keep your microbiome healthy. It is the single biggest thing you'll do to to help yourself heal or to keep yourself healthy. It's your best insurance policy. There's a, I've seen, I, I believe it, I, I don't, I don't completely recall, but I believe off the top of my head, there was a, there was a metadata analysis of some, some, some articles, some scientific articles. So what they do is they take the conclusions from a whole host of different, of, of different articles. So, you know, normally you've got like an article with a whole bunch of references and it said, this was the conclusion of the experiment that we did. So basically it takes like 160, 180 of these tests and com- and basically creates a new a new article based on the data from from these from the from these tests and and basically the conclusion was the microbiome diversity of an individual directly inversely correlates with the likelihood of them developing literally any disease so this is this is non-communicable diseases so this is this is heart disease, this is chronic fatigue syndrome, this is autoimmunity. These are like non-infectious diseases. This is also true for infectious disease. So COVID and long COVID, for viruses and flus, you're significantly less likely to have complex adverse events or death if you have an increased diversity in your microbiome. It's literally like the the single biggest thing that you can that you can work on that is gonna change your health and put put your health in a situation of, of strength and of, of of it being strong and resilient microbiome diversity don't sleep on it i did my biggest regret of 2023 it's really really important question here from simona she says what about mutaflor i don't actually know what's in mutaflor so let me do a little google and let's have a look so i've heard of it before i i've heard of mutaflor but off the top of my head i don't know what it is there are a lot of probiotics out there oh yeah i remember this one Oh, this is cool. Yeah. Mutaflor is the is the probiotic E. coli strain. This is really interesting. So this is called the Nissel strain. I believe this was discovered in Germany because many, many of the soldiers, I think this is World War One. My my history isn't great. I think this is World War One time. Many of the soldiers were having many of the soldiers were having diarrhea and like gastrointestinal problems. And this was one of the first probiotics that was ever made. So this is in 1917. This is this is like a long time ago. And this, this German doctor isolated this strain of probiotic E. coli and was giving it to the soldiers and it was resolving their problems. It was resolving their, their diarrhea. So this is really cool because this is E. coli. When you hear E. coli, you think, you think food poisoning. You think salmonella. You think I had bad food or the person at the restaurant didn't wash their hands or the meat was contaminated or they, they did some kind of poor food food hygiene. E. coli can actually be a probiotic. And most often, the people who are most susceptible to food poisoning are people that have poor colonies of beneficial E. coli strains in the gut. This is a really cool probiotic. I'd say this is a pretty niche use. Generally, when we're looking at probiotics and strengthening your microbiome, you're going to be doing it either with the lactobacillus and bifidobacterium, because these are your primary colonizing organisms. And they're also a bit like the police force. They regulate your E. coli levels. They regulate a bunch of your other microflora. If you if you know that you have post-infectious IBS, so if you know that you've got food poisoning 
and that food poisoning caused IBS or SIBO or something like that, using this could be a good option for you because it's going to crowd out the pathogenic E. coli strains. This could also be useful for you if when you look on a stool test, you have either too much E. coli, because that would be an indicator that you have pathogenic E. coli, or if you don't have enough, that means you're missing those, those beneficial E. coli strains. So this is more of a niche use. When I'm talking about using a probiotic, this is not really what I mean, but this does have a very specific application. And if that is you, that's a really good place to use it. Simona says, uh, it used for chronic constipation. I think generally this is more used for, I think originally it was discovered for diarrhea. That's what, what they discovered it for. But your gut dysbiosis can go either way. Constipation or diarrhea can both be caused by flora imbalance. If the flora imbalance is that you don't have enough of the correct E. coli strains, you could go either way. It's very possible. I do know that a lot of people that have SIBO or that have IBS, especially if it's post-infectious, usually what happens is, they have a period of chronic diarrhea. So if you think about an, an acute food poisoning episode, you're vomiting and you have diarrhea. And then what usually tends to happen is this, this is your body trying to purge this infectious organism. Your body's trying to get rid of this dysbiosis. It tries and tries and tries and it can't succeed. So it stops trying. You stop vomiting. You stop having diarrhea. And then this organism colonizes inside of the gut and causes a dysbiosis. And this generally leads to a tendency towards constipation. It's a very, very interesting thing. It's a pattern that I've observed in, in several clients. So very, very, very interesting. Question here from AJ says, I know a friend who has been using BPC-157 for three months and his food allergies have decreased, question mark. Written like a statement, but phrased as a question with a question mark. I'll do my best. He says, so BPC is actually, uh, is, a, is a peptide. It's a... Um, it's, kind of, it's like a supplement, uh, BPC-157. So I, I believe BPC is an acronym for body protective compound. It was basically discovered and isolated in the lumen of the small intestine. This is the place where you have the most of, of BPC. You have it inside your small intestine. And using it as a supplement is really helpful in improving your... Um, it generally works on all connective tissue in your body. And your small intestine is actually primarily connective tissue, believe it or not. It's very, very similar to connective tissue. This is one reason that meat stock and bone broth is really good for your small intestine because all of the, so the thing that makes a meat stock good is when you cook it with the joints, you know, the knee joints, the hip joints, the skin, the cartilage, these all have the same ingredients as your small intestine. So BPC works really well for healing connective tissue problems. So like if you've got tennis elbow or if you've got tendonitis or something like that, using injections on site can be really effective. But when you're using it, the place that it's going to translocate the most is the gut because that's where you find it the most. And it can actually significantly infect your gut permeability. So if you have leaky gut, you could potentially, and, and if, you, if your body was basically functioning with a deficient amount of BPC, if you were to supplement it, you'd boost the BPC levels in your gut. Your gut permeability would decrease. So you would reduce your leaky gut. And food allergies are really connected to intestinal permeability. So food allergies usually come from you eat a food, you can't digest it properly. Molecules of undigested food leak through the gut lining and they trigger, they trigger reactions. If you're healing the gut lining, you're restoring some of your digestive system so that it can work again. And even if you don't fully digest it, less of it's going to leak through. So it's not going to cause a problem. This is a really good indicator that in this case for your friend, they've got leaky gut. And there's probably other things they could do. Let's say, namely, probiotics. Super, super important. Probiotics are the most, I would say, the most important thing in healing your gut. They might benefit from taking a probiotic. I'd be really interested to hear from you. If they try taking a probiotic, what happens? And I would, what I would actually expect is, in the short term, when they take the probiotic, their food sensitivities probably get worse. And that's a good sign that in the long run, it's actually going to make them better. This was pretty fun. I haven't done a, a, a video on, on YouTube before. It's been really nice. Um, I hope you found it interesting and helpful. And it's really nice to have a couple of questions so that I could uh, engage with you a little bit. It's really, really nice to, to have you here. I think it's Andrew and uh, Simona. Really nice to, to see you again. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I hope you found this really interesting and really helpful. I'm going to wrap it up before it's getting a little bit sore. Um, let me know if you like it on YouTube. 
Maybe the quality is better. Maybe the audio is different. Let me know. Tell me what you think. I really, really love your feedback. If you do have any questions after I finish, be sure to leave them below and I will get back to you. That's everything for today. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.